causes reductions in IQ. It increases sterility or lack of fertility. And it's being added to so many of the daily staples that we consume. We'll get back to food additives in a moment. But first, I wanted to look at genetically modified organisms. Did you know for many years the American people have been eating cloned beef and pork, and now they're expanding out into other forms of meat? Let's look at salmon first. Major university studies conclusively have proven that the type of genetically modified salmon that is actually a cross species, they've mixed other uh, animal genes in with it, that when this fish is introduced with wild natural salmon, within 40 generations, all the natural salmon are extinct. And the FDA approved this, and they're going to allow it to be released into the wild that isn't even a salmon, it is a cross species chimera. It is a mixture like something out of the island of Dr. Maru, something out of a nightmare. More than 85% of the corn now consumed in the United States, and it's also starting to trend that way in Europe and Canada, is genetically engineered. It grows its own pesticide uh, within the corn kernels so that insects won't eat it. If the insects can't eat this and live, what do you think is going to happen when lab rats or humans eat it? We have literally hundreds of studies showing that not just Monsanto's, but other major GMO companies, corn, that's the majority of corn we're now eating today in the United States, has been linked to organ failure in lab animals. The studies also show massive increases in sterility in rats and guinea pigs that are fed not just GMO corn, but GMO cotton seeds. Studies in India, Germany, and the United States have conclusively shown that when they feed the cotton seeds left over from the cotton crop from these genetically modified varieties, that the cows are having miscarriages, they are having low birth weights, or in many cases, they're simply dying. And what is in most processed foods? Genetically modified cottonseed oil. Major studies are also showing that genetically engineered crops are killing honeybees and monarch butterflies. But they don't stop there. Now they claim they're coming out with a genetically engineered mosquito that's malaria proof that they're going to release into the open biosphere. The very genetic code of the planet is being butchered in a hostile corporate takeover. Many years ago, an executive from Monsanto was quoted in National Geographic as saying that that is their program that they want to basically have their crops and their organisms take over the entire biosphere of this planet. And the major genetic engineer companies have focused mainly on eight major food crops. Now they're expanding out into hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other plants, literally changing the genetic code of the planet. This is a genetic dictatorship. This is genetic vandalism. And that's why the Rockefellers, the United Nations and others have built these giant armored seed vaults all over the world, not just at the Arctic Circle, and they admit they're doing it in case all of this gets out of hand, that they'll have a type of Noah's Ark. So all these fake environmental groups, they never complain about this. They never talk about true environmental degradation. They want to put a tax on carbon dioxide that humans exhale, that plants respirate from and carry out photosynthesis with as a way to shut down industrial society and control every facet of our lives. That's the big secret. This is a population reduction program. It is an epidemic. The sperm count has dropped in the Western world exponentially. Even the government has been predicting within another generation, almost everyone is gonna be sterile. This is the globalist religion. This is their philosophy. They want the planet for themselves. The UN has said that their stated plan is an 80% population reduction. You've heard Ted Turner call us useless eaters and feeders and say that 80% of us need to be killed. You've heard Prince Philip say he wants to come back as a virus uh, to kill the majority of the world population. Dr. Eric Pianca, Peter Singer, it's all over the news. 
news where they tell us that we should only have one child because more than one is bad for the environment and that the recession is good for lowering our carbon footprint. This is the big secret. We live in a scientific dictatorship and the United States and England are the epicenter of this and it's expanding worldwide. Remember all the secret testing, all the secret sterilization that went on in the United States and Europe. Remember what Hitler did. He learned all of that from the eugenicist and the Rockefeller family in the United States. This is a culture of death being pushed on you and your family. And even if you think the world is overpopulated, you need to understand that you're being targeted by this as well. Targeted by design. Recombinant bovine growth hormone in your milk, making eight-year-old girls go into puberty, and they should be going into puberty at 12 or 13. Silicone in chicken McNuggets and hundreds and hundreds of other processed foods. Aspartame, that is the feces of genetically engineered bacteria that has incredible health problems that have been proven. Think for yourself, it goes on and on. ABC News, this goes back four years ago. Viral meat spray, advancing food safety. They spray a live virus on the meat to supposedly kill the bacteria. This is a live vaccine they spray on most of the meat you're consuming that you're buying from the store. It gets even worse. The petroleum distillates or toxic waste that's left over from petroleum refineries that refine oil into gasoline, they take these tens of millions of pounds of toxic waste that's left over, the fluoride, the mercury, the lead, and they dump it on crops as supposed fertilizer. And what do crops like tomatoes and corn and potatoes do? They pull in all of those toxins out of the ground. In fact, scientists for many years have used plants to actually detoxify uh, areas that have been contaminated. And those plants are pulling all of this up and then you are eating it. That's why the Washington Post reported in January of 2008 that a major study found that nearly a third of the 55 popular brand name foods and beverage products were filled with mercury despite the fact that the people of Europe for over 20 years have fought off all the genetically modified wheat and corn and other crops being planted in their nation. Now the EU is buckled and is accepting it. The United States is literally a testing ground for all of this. It's just automatically approved. And the people that work for these corporations, they're compartmentalized. They don't know what's going on. The people that work at these stores, they have no idea what's happening. This is affecting all of us. This is hurting everyone. Many different forms of cancer are growing by thousands of percentage points. Uh, diabetes, all these different diseases, and in major studies, it's all been linked to the toxic additives that are in our food, our water. And I haven't even had time to get into MSG. I mean, I've interviewed brain surgeons, uh, neurologists, scientists. I mean, it just devastates the brain. It's an excitotoxin. It destroys the liver. And it is in tens of thousands of products. We can say no. We can stand up. But if you've got a neighbor giving fluoride water to their baby, please go over and warn them. If you got a neighbor that's sitting there eating MSG-filled chips one after the other, Warn them, you've got a responsibility. If you know people that are feeding processed foods filled with GMO, warn them. And for God's sakes, don't give it to your own children. If you wanna kill yourself, that's your own business. But don't hurt your children. Don't do this, ladies and gentlemen. In closing, I wanna talk about some positive things. Just 15 years ago or so, you couldn't find organic food anywhere on store shelves. And now, about half of what you see is organic. Uh, just a few years ago, all the milk uh, had the uh, growth hormone in it. Now it's hard to find milk that has the growth hormone in it because the consumers have spoken and said no. A few years ago, you couldn't find toothpaste that didn't have sodium fluoride in it. Now Tom's of Maine is starting to you know, take over the aisle space and displace uh, the other mainline toothpaste makers where it says on the back, if you swallow this, call poison control immediately. Even Colgate is now putting out fluoride-free toothpaste. People are demanding that they not be poisoned and they're finding out about what's going on. And so industry is starting to respond and at least give people who want a choice an option to not be forcibly medicated through the food and the water. You know cigarettes are bad for you, but just 20 years ago, the cigarette makers were getting up before Congress and saying it was a conspiracy theory that it was killing people. 
And then later it came out in their internal documents, they knew it was deadly. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen the studies. Much of what they're putting in our food and water is far worse than even cigarettes, as bad as they are. One of the biggest killers in this country. This is a covert, soft kill operation. We'll put a lot of links beneath this video so you can check out the facts for yourself. And I'm just begging you to do your own research and find out that one of the most dangerous places in the world is your grocery store and the tap water in your house. All right, that's a special report from Alex Jones. Look for that on Infowars.com as well as the Alex Jones channel on YouTube, as well as the report that he had in the last hour about uh, Charlie Sheen's 20 minutes with the president. You need to see that report to understand what's going on with Homeland Security. When you look at them collapsing the border and yet escalating the police state internally in the United States, it's not mistakes being made. It's not incompetence. It's a deliberate plan. And of course, as Alex Jones was talking there about GMO and food being your medicine, we're reminded that we have the government pushing back, defending the interests of these corporations that are corrupting our food supply, pushing back against your right to know what's in your food. It's a real struggle. We're really happy that the uh, food babe has come on now twice on InfoWars and given us information, released information that very quickly went viral and had a immediate effect on the food suppliers. It's very hard to get information about what's in your food. They don't want you to know. And of course, in a GMO uh, Supreme Court case uh, not too long ago, we had a nine to nothing Supreme Court decision that essentially, I believe, went very much the wrong way. Today, we had another landmark Supreme Court decision about uh, Hobby Lobby and whether or not they can force people to do things that are against the religion. Of course, Hobby Lobby and this other company, this uh, Conestoga uh, Woodworks a Mennonite company, they are very closely held companies. They're essentially individual businesses. They're not publicly traded corporations. Uh, but they're trying to tell people that they could not exercise their freedom of religion. And what I find most interesting about the Supreme Court decision is the minority opinion that we see written by Justice Ginsburg. She says that this decision is a startling breath that would allow corporations to opt out of any law they judge incompatible with their sincerely held religious beliefs. Well, why shouldn't we be the judges of what our sincerely held religious beliefs are? Who's supposed to be the judge of that? Ginsburg, the Supreme Court? We have the right to make our own decisions about what our religious beliefs are and how we're going to exercise that. Fortunately, in this case, they tried to shut down these two businesses, destroy them. In the case of Hobby Lobby, because it was a large corporation, a large company that was closely held by a family, they put $1.3 million a day fines against them. They would have shut down that business. These people stood up for their rights, fought all the way to the Supreme Court, one today, and that's a lesson for all of us. We all need to stand up for our rights. I'm just amazed at what the uh, dissenting opinion said. She went on to say that Congress enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act to serve a far less radical purpose. In other words, the First Amendment is too radical. When the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law, Justice Ginsburg and others believe, hey, we're going to make the laws and we're going to tell you what your religious beliefs are. We're going to be right back after the break. We have some interesting news out of Hong Kong and how that parallels American elections right after the break. And we're going to have Dr. Stanley Monteith joining us to talk about health issues and what's happening at the border, what that tells us about the New World Order's global plan. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Genesis Communications Radio Network. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else 
has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off Super Detox Special at InfoWarsLife.com.